Welcome to our channel, Always Keep Moving. We are Anna and Kelvin. Ten months ago, we quit our jobs in Sweden and we have been doing an around the world trip. The first part of our trip took us through Latin America. From there, we did a trip through Southern Africa, then the Middle East, then into Southeast Asia. After Southeast Asia, we went to Taiwan, which is a place where I used to live many years ago. It was great to see old friends and show Anna some of the great sights in this place from there the last leg of our journey is beginning we are trekking in nepal then we're going to india then to the uk before heading back to sweden don't forget to watch our previous videos coming from four different continents and over 20 different countries and also don't forget to like and subscribe we're, we are in the dining room of the little hostel where we're staying the chomrung cottages and they've just got a, um, a calendar on the wall and they've got typical pictures of things you associate with Nepal. They've got the elephants, you get them in the south in the Chitwan region. The Chitwan Safari Park is synonymous with seeing elephants and doing elephant rides. Uh, also you've got tigers more in the northern region. Most people know that about Nepal. You've got beautiful lakes. Yeah. People that have been to Nepal are aware that they've got lakes, they've got beautiful little temples up in the mountains. Of course, beautiful mountains, everybody knows that. But one thing they have got that I didn't know until this trip is they actually have leopards. And I don't just mean snow leopards, actual real leopards, so to speak. They're more in the lower regions and uh, they live in wild and they stretch right across the, um, I think in total, 20 different countries uh, worldwide, but quite a few in the Asia region. And then what we're gonna do, there's a guy who we met who's actually working here on leopard conservation and we're gonna be doing quite a lengthy interview with him. So stay tuned to that and we'll learn a lot more about the leopards here in Nepal, but in the whole of Asia. Hello everyone, I am honoured to be here with Jack Kinross. And not only am I meeting what I consider a hero, uh, old school hero, we are conducting the interview in arguably one of the most beautiful places on earth, or certainly one of the beautiful, most beautiful places I've ever been. And I have been to quite a few. We're up here in a small little village, well, small, comparatively big for this region called Chomrong. And it's somewhere that you pass through whenever you're doing one of the Annapurna treks, which is usually done out of a town called Pokhara, which is in Nepal. I mean, I've always had a soft spot for Nepal. I came here almost 30 years ago and did a load of trekking here. It blew me away, the sheer beauty of the place. I always wanted to come back and I'm very honored and lucky to have had that chance and come. Upon doing so, I met Jack and he was one of the first to inform me, even though I consider myself quite wise and uh, worldly knowledgeable, but they actually have leopards here. I knew they had snow leopards higher in the mountains, but Jack informed me that they have real, leopard, real leopards here, so to speak, down, and they're all in this region. Jack is a hero, as I just said, because he's one of the old school that's not only saying the right things and blogging, he's actually here on the ground getting his hands dirty and has been for, what, 30 years almost, is it? Or, uh, uh, on and off for 20, yeah. Okay, yeah. I okay. mean, um, prior to that, um, there was more being here for, you know, you know, there was different things going on. So, yeah. So, um, 20, 20 years ago, but thank you very much. I mean, let's forget the hero, hero, no, 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 hero no, thing. Oh, old school for sure. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, I mean, you're um, originally from New Zealand. Yeah, so, I, I am. Yeah. I, I, I was born there. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a proud Kiwi, but um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about rugby, even, <laughs> even, though, even though that's what most people associate us with. So, yeah, so yeah I, I have, a, I guess, in a um, conservation capacity i have a 20-year association mm -hmm. with, with nepal. nepal or with uh, conservation in general or? um no it all goes back um further than i really want to mention but um as far as nepal is concerned re you're really the last 20 years okay, okay. um and 2003 was uh actually the um anniversary of the uh to go back to the kiwi thing 
Sweden and Hillary and Shri Patin Singh. Okay. Cl- okay. Climbing yeah, Everest. I do remember hearing yeah, that on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during during because it year, was fifty three that Hillary done. Yeah, it, yeah. So it was the fiftieth yeah. anniversary. Yeah. yeah. So during during two thousand three, I did a um, uh, um, a trip here that was um, linking that to the tiger. And to mm-hmm. cut a very long story short. Um, that kind of gave birth to some other projects. And even though I was doing work in other areas, more based around um, illegal wildlife trade, um, and, and some of that happened um, beyond 2003 in this part of the world, in, in, in Nepal. In 2010, to jump forward a little bit, I, I, I was quite frustrated with that scenario, what was going on with the, um, illegal wildlife trade. So, so we looked at more project development. So the last, 2010 was the year of the tiger. So really from um, that year through to the last year of the tiger, which finished um, in January this year, it's kind of been like a 12 year um, segment. And during that, I spent most of that time here, more on project development, which was more kind of, not not um, dissected from anti-poaching trafficking but those elements are still in there but a lot of yeah sort of other other stuff based yeah, around okay, that, okay. Yeah. so so yeah and so basically originally you was just coming and going between New Zealand but you're pretty much based there all year round now is that right or? Um, for, for the last for the last for during this kind of critical 12 year, um, segment, yeah. Um, I've been mainly based here, but it's um, the the link with um, if we move on to leopard. Uh, there's a there's a strong link between um, one of the core areas of the work, which unfortunately still is illegal wildlife trade. Um, the the trafficking of leopard body parts between um, India and Nepal is, is a significant factor. Uh, a, a lot of leopards. Um, uh, hunted in um, India, and unfortunately, the trafficking component does come through this country, mm. and even the other way around as well. Yeah. Uh, but the the, the other so, the, so mm. sorry to interrupt mm. you, just for the sake of our viewers. Yep. Right? So this region of Nepal, all the leopards are here. Is it the same on the other side of the Himalaya in um, uh, in India? It's it's more about the altitude of the mountains. That's a good a good ground for them, irrespective of whether it's India or Nepal. Uh, or is that is or is have I got it totally wrong? Or I mean, not 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 totally. Um, but I'll 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 put it right. Yeah, um, please do. Yeah, <laughs> le- leopards are actually um, incredibly adaptable, and they uh, they. They spend. Um, they're, they're across sixty-three countries in the world. They're the oh, most. Okay. They're the most um, widespread of, of the big cat species. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and in that regard, they're really critical because they are apex predator in of so much of the globe. But the problem is, they um, don't really get recognised for that, and there's not the same conservation emphasis on them as, as there is with tiger, lion, or jaguar, or even snow Lion-o. leopard now. And the thing is, they are widespread, even in Nepal. Like they're, mm-hmm. they're actually down at the lowland on the Tarai, which is close to sea level, okay. but even up way up above here as well. I mean, okay. Even that ridge line there, we, we know there's leopard. Uh-huh. And, you know, sort of well above 3,000 metres and even up towards 5,000 okay. metres. So they are widespread, and they are right throughout the country, and, and it's the same in India. But because they are widespread, there's kind of this perception they're doing okay. When when they're not, they're getting persecuted. Mm-hmm. They're still a um, big target species for illegal wildlife trade. And the other issue is they're running out of habitat, so they're running into conflict with people mm-hmm. and so there's a lot of mm-hmm. yeah. retaliation yeah. because of that yeah mm. i think you were telling us when we spoke a few nights ago that 
certain regions where they have been known to kill people or attack mm. people, it's basically where they've got nothing else yeah. to feed on, so yeah. they're forced down into the thing. Yeah. So it's this catch-22 yeah. of you spoil their own ha uh, natural habitat, yeah. so therefore they have to come into the villages and scavenge yeah. for food. And if, if a small child or, or a small frail person is in the wrong place at the wrong time, mm. and then you just hear the headline, leopard attacks person, yeah. people go out and go gun crazy and start killing them. Well, and it, it just uh, perpetuates it, even more. It, it does perpetuate. Mm. Um, you know, what, what I will say for both countries, um, and, and they are examples to the rest of the world in some ways, there is a degree of tolerance mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that that is there for a lot of reasons, whether it's faith-based or culturally based. But, of course, there's always a, a, a snapping point for mm -hmm. anybody, you know, mm -hmm. and so we are. Mm -hmm. When children in particular are killed by a leopard, obviously, um, it causes a lot of grief, and um, having been to so many cases where that's the you know that's the situation across different areas of the country, it it it, it can create a psyche which is really uh, the tolerance goes down, and there's a yeah, negativity yeah, which is yeah. very understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, there is a perpetuation. Mm. So I wouldn't say people go gun crazy, but someone may just decide to take the matter into their own yeah. hands or government decides they've got to act in a certain way and so it's a it's important not to apportion blame to anybody but what can happen is um with human wildlife conflict which is what this falls under this 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 kind of um strain coexistence between humans and leopards in many places mm -hmm. is then you've got a situation where Funny enough, the poaching, trafficking side can come into it because you've got people taking advantage of this. You've actually got people going yeah, to certain yeah, areas yeah, and going, yeah, we yeah. can fix your problem. Yeah, and so elite, and then they're doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So it's so kind of connected. And just to go yeah, back a little yeah, bit, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, in, in 2003 when I was on that trip, um, I, I was in India, but just before I, I got back to Nepal, uh, it was actually in April 2000. Uh, three, 20 years ago to this month, mm. um, 109 leopard skins got seized in Kathmandu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I was here shortly after, and I was talking to the, um, the in-country head of WWF, um, a guy called Dr. Chandra Gurung, who I struck up a good relationship with. Mm -hmm. But sadly, he's not, not with us anymore. And, and we talked about this. And... At the time, there was a kind of civil war going on and an insurgency. So there was a lot of emphasis going on uh, how to protect the tiger. And when I asked Chandra, I said, well, what about this big seizure? He says, yeah, it's a really serious thing, 109 leopard skins, but basically we have no resource at the moment to do anything about that. So 20 years later, I'm, I don't think a lot's changed. You know, there's still, the leopard is still not in the priority the way these other species are and it's still suffering because of that yeah. and I mean one thing that really struck me what you said it kind of like dinged nail on the head the other day when we spoke was you said we're in the Himalaya the biggest mountain range in the world mm. and even when you said it it's so obvious mm. but it's only when you said it that it struck a chord that like this, this mountain range is supplying water to the two most populated mm. countries on the earth, mm. i.e. India and China. Mm. And if the natural ecosystem of this uh, mountain range goes down, that's going to have irreversible yeah. effects, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and, like, I consider myself reasonably worldly wise, and it's only when you said it, it's so obvious that you're like, shit, why didn't I think mm. of that, like, you know what I mean? And it's so true. And if we get messages like that out there, hopefully... You know what I mean? It'll strike yeah. chords with the right people at the right time. Yeah. Because, I mean, I mean yeah. these mountains, all right, you're blown away by the beauty when you get it. But if we, if we sort of get up, right, come back to planet Earth and look at it more from a geological point of view, they're super important for the rest of the planet, man. It is, it's the heartbeat. You can argue it's the heartbeat of the planet, really. Like, you uh, know, I mean, it's, absolutely, Joe. You, you've hit the nail on the head. And, um, I, I, I also consider you very wise, so... Um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> You've got low standards, but, then. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get yeah, out more, yeah. yeah. But, um, but you're right, and um, 
the 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 Himalaya is often re referred to as the third pole. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you are, it, it is a huge heartbeat, and the the ramifications of things going wrong. And believe me, things are going wrong mm -hmm. um, uh, climatically and and ecologically in this vast mountain range. And with the leopard being the apex predator and so much of that so much of the range, it makes sense yeah. that it should be getting a lot more conservation emphasis. This thinking is starting to filter in a lot more, but it's a process that you know we're still working on. Um, but the, the the there is that aspect to it, the, the ramifications, like even you know, if all of a sudden if these huge watersheds are keep getting affected on both sides of the Himalaya and, and it affects um, India in such a way there's mass migrations. Yeah, yeah no, planet, no, that's my point. Like, the whole yeah. planet is if, affected. If the yeah. two most populous countries on the planet that take up more than half of the total world's population yep. suddenly start migrating in different ways, that's going to yep. have a massive ripple effect. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Environmentally, economically, yep. geopolitically, yep. everything. Yep, like, you yep. Know. yep. So, yeah. so true. So I mean, that that's a, that's a, a really um, important aspect that the the profile of the species needs to be addressed mm -hmm. um, and very quickly. Uh, and and that's that's almost like the clinical side of it, though. Mm -hmm. There there is the the other aspect um, that I was talking to your esteemed camera person who is also very wise <laughs> about is is this fundamental aspect that we that needs to be looked at as well and um and you know i've already shared a story with you about lepers that i've dealt with that have been ripped to pieces and snares or injured really badly in other ways and i'll just cut in then just for the sake of our mm. viewers jack's been here on the ground living up in the jungle, helping to rehabilitate tigers that have tried to be caught, injured, and get back into the process. I mean, it's living up there in the jungle, sleeping rough, trying to rehabilitate these uh, ti uh, these leopards. I mean, that's what I say when I say he's old school and he's a hero. He's not just saying the right things online. He's actually getting his hands dirty, rolling his sleeves up and really going for it. So just on that short, that story about the leopards, please expand on that, Jack, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Good, yeah. Good but I, I I think this is really fundamental to the to the whole issue um, because it, although you know we've got the whole ecological aspect which you know you, you've brought up, but this this whole um, aspect of uh, the the way we treat other sentient beings mm -hmm. um, and the leopard is a highly evolved mm -hmm. animal. You know, it's one of the big cat species and. Yeah. And um, everyone in the world has some sort of connection to big cats. You know, they, yeah. they, they engender something in us, you know, some sort of fascination. Um, but what's happening to the leopard with this kind of cruelty aspect, um, this needs to be addressed a lot more, and we need to all look at that. Uh, and I, and I had a, I had a two-week period um, last year, which I, you know, I mentioned to you off camera that, there were three leopards that came into our rehab area, um, and I, I won't go into all the details. But over over this period, um, one we, one one survived. We managed to we managed to we managed to get it back into the jungle. The other two didn't, but their injuries were so serious, um, and it was such a stressful time for all of us, including the leopards. One of, one of which died in my arms. Um, that it really made me look at our whole, all our protocols, but especially our attitudes towards this. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to my question to Dr. Chandra Gurung 20 years ago, 109 leopards, wow, that's a huge amount taken out of the ecosystems. The cruelty that every leopard went through to die, each one of those 109, and then you jump forward almost 20 years again to those three leopards, all of them were in pain you know, oh. for various reasons, and and we're kind of forgetting that side of it. No, now, we're no, getting we're getting quite I mean. clinical yeah, yeah, yeah. in our approach to conservation yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I honestly believe we need to really get back to what what Jane Goodall subscribes to is 
it's not just the species, it's the individual animal. We really need to have... Mm -hmm. I remember, thinking, I remember yeah. hearing mm -hmm. something. It's mm -hmm. not, it's a different animal, it's elephants. But, and it did, did, I heard it many years ago, it could have perhaps been by Jim or I've seen so many documentaries over the years. And it was like, it was related to the elephants in Africa. And you get these bull elephants that are like, just storming into villages and have all the crazy and the killing. But when they actually started doing more research and like monitoring these elephants and like that, they were actually realizing 99% of the ones that were doing these like crazy antics were the ones that had seen their own parents mullered mm. in front of them mm. at the so mm. you imagine any child yeah. that sees its own parents yeah. get slaughtered in yeah. front of it growing up as an orphan are they ever going to be yeah. stable you know exactly. what i mean it's like exactly. so so if you sort yeah. of take try and yeah. i wouldn't say humanize animals but just just get that compassion yeah. like yeah. of like not just seeing them as a furry yeah. finger spots on they're actually a living organism you know what absolutely. I mean? With emotions, like, absolutely you know? yeah you know you, yeah. You, you've actually mentioned what i think is the key key word in this and, that, and that's compassion um because i i, I think to be honest unless we bring that in we're putting ourselves in a really precarious mm. state with all this. Mm. and unless we can bring more compassion into conservation but i guess why is society looking at the, the whole spectrum of this then the ramifications are going to be yeah that we do have these collapsed ecosystems the, the, we will have these ecological well, um, I think anyone, our, anyone yeah. our age, anyone our age, if I say it like, I'm 53, you're 10 years older than me, we've seen such big changes mm. in the natural environment. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, shit, that's my lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. It's yeah. like, so if you're looking at the bigger picture, I mean, our kids are going to see more. Yeah. And our grandkids, arguably, are never going to know what yeah. snow is. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like the way things are going. It really does bring it home. Like, I mean, uh, like I, I, I've done big trips around the world many years ago. Uh, 20, 20 some years later, I'm here doing them again. So you can imagine the changes I've seen in the different yeah. places we've been to. Yeah. Now that's normal evolution of society, whatever you want to call it. But you know, it's what, what analogy can I give? You know, it's all right having the nice, uh, the nice suntan, but if your heart and lungs are in good condition, yeah. what's the point in looking healthy on the outside? Absolutely. Like, you know what I mean? And, Absolutely. and something like this, which you said is like, you know, I mean, yeah, it's the heartbeat of the, of potentially the heartbeat of the world. You know, some might say, oh, you're exaggerating, but I'd say, it's as important as the aortic valve yeah. of the heart. Yeah, in the good analogy, If this yeah. functions, yeah. the rest of everything else. Oh, it, it does. Collapsing. It does. Yeah. It does. And um, you, you know, I mean, our whole bodies, everything is everything is connected. But there are mm. certain certain um, parts of our body that we need to survive. You just can't now we can actually do. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. And, and yeah. this is actually part of that. So, uh, so you, you're exactly right. And so. I think that compassion has to extend itself right through to the whole realm, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, There's yeah, compassion yeah, for everything yeah, here. Yeah. It's not just the leopard itself, it's where they live. And if you take this region as an example, and, and the reason like I'm here now and, and working with um, the local community is, it's a really critical area because you don't have to go too many too far away where more roads have come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been more habitat degradation. I've seen massive changes. Yep, inside yep. The and area. that puts stress on the wildlife and the ecology in that area, including the apex predator, which is the leopard. So yeah. it's all connected. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, all right, we've seen big changes. We sounded a little bit negative, but what's your hope for the future? Uh, I, I, my hope for the future is that um, it is based on that we are clever enough to, to get this right. Mm -hmm. um, there's no doubt about that. The, you know, the human beings, you've, you've made a lot of mistakes to use um, uh, a, 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 a not so strong mm -hmm. expression. I, I'd yeah. use it strong, but, but I know this is a family show. Yeah. But, but. Um, the solutions are there, so but it's going to take it's going to take two, two, two kind of um, two things to drive the solutions, and that's a, a much greater commitment from wider society. It can't just be left yeah, to a critical mass. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and but the the other part is that um, the, the resources that come in with that are attached to education of, of everybody, but especially these next generations yeah, coming yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Because we're at this critical stage now. We're at the cusp. Mm. And, and, and there's a general agreement in the next 10 to 20, 30 years maximum, but probably less than that. It's, it's now or never. But one of the main um, kind of like overall solutions in the spectrum is we, we only need to really protect uh, a certain percentage of the planet to make sure things can function. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, we can cut off an arm or a leg, but we stand, can still function. And that, that's that been looked at as around 30%, um, preferably more. But if we can do that within the next 10 to 20 years, um, preferably faster than that. But, um, and it only needs 30% of the world's population to buy into that. It's possible. So the, the key elements, that you, you know, we talked about like compassion and, and, and I guess just truly understanding the problem and buying in. We only need a certain amount of people to do that because then it will ground swell mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. But that needs to happen I mean, pretty what quickly, you said yeah. before off camera, I mm -hmm. think, was a, a good... Uh a good viewpoint, like it's thirty percent of the world's population sounds a big figure. Mm. If you look at it as for every ten people, you yeah. need three to take more yeah, responsibility yeah, 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 and do yeah. something about it. Then it's a lot more yeah. achievable. So yeah. that's what I mean. Like I mean, if the people watching this can think, right, well, if ten of my so uh, closest sort of associates, family or friends, if I can at least get three of them to buy into the idea, then, you know what I mean, the ball's already rolling, kind of thing. If, 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 if we had three people out of ten decide right now that their environmental impact, their footprint, was going to be um, at a sustainable level, we'd be okay pretty quickly, because obviously it would spread out. Yeah. But if those three people could act really quickly, um, this thing can work. But we do need that action. Yeah, yeah. At the moment, but we're, we're kind of caught if, up in a weakness. So the yeah. average person watching, if you say 30% of the world's population, it sounds an un yeah. un un unmountable yeah. task. But if you say, for every 10 people you know, if you can get free to buy into it, it sounds a lot more realistic than you. Well, it, I mean? it, it, it's, like, it's yeah. achievable. It's achievable yeah. when you look at, um, like if you write a blog and you get you get a certain amount of hits and you get you get all the emojis coming in. You get people who understand, but it's got to be more than emojis. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, in yeah, conservation yeah, now, particularly yeah, the the hard bitten people who've been involved for a while, awareness has become a bit of a word that you know you could yeah. start a punch up because if awareness isn't preceded by action, then it's, it's a waste of time. Yeah, 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 so yeah. we've got to and go further got than so the emojis. Much, you know? well, that's the yeah. thing, uh, yeah. Jim, Jack. Yeah. I've got so much respect for you because. You're not just sending a few nice little uh, Instagram uh, messages and whatever. Well, they're not you're, nice. <laughs> you're, you're doing it the hard way. You have actually took action, and that's what I mean. And I think if we're trying to look at it like future and what the next steps we can be in terms of making people more aware of this particular place. I mean, I think you mentioned um, you're in the process of having a little movement like... Uh, Coffee for the leopard type kind of uh, thing. Yeah, that? yeah. I mean, um, we, you know, to for for our work specifically, we're, we're starting a, um, uh, a brand. Well, we've started it called Wild Leopard Coffee. Wild Leopard, um, leopard Coffee. And um, that all, if you go to um, this is where the plug comes in, wildleopard.net, uh, uh -huh. you'll you'll see a lot of information around that. But it's it's also more about that's just one element and, and an overall thinking and and Shulung is a really good place like the stupa and the gompa we're kind of attaching a more overall thinking which is it has a strong buddhist yeah. philosophy but it's more general yeah and the fact yeah. that like as you mentioned in the start you know this is on the way to anapuna base camp we have an audience yeah, coming down yeah, these yeah, steps yeah, they can yeah, only go yeah, one yeah, way yeah, yeah, and yeah. people are already engaging it's yeah, really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. um and I had some fantastic conversations with people, and this comes back down to something the three of us talked about just a few minutes ago, 
it's got to be about real conversations. Mm. I mean, like, yeah, real conversations. Yeah, like, yeah. Face to face. I mean, we we yeah. touched on it before. Like, okay, if I use the, the war in Ukraine as an example, mm. we know it's a terrible war. I know people are getting mullered. I know whatever. But because I've not been there, it's mm. still a little bit not quite in, yeah, the, in yeah. there. If you've actually been and looked in the eyes of people yeah. who have had the parents mullered and the, you know, yeah. the, the house that's been in the family for generations smashed to the ground, mm. it, it, it's more real. Mm. But because I've been here and I have got such a, a profound attachment to this place, it's more real to me. Mm. And I think when you think of the amount of tourists we're getting here, for us... If I put it this way, for all the people that's been to Nepal and done this trek and seen the beauty that surrounded it, and had mm. that, like, without sounding, like, religious, like, it's a semi-spiritual experience, mm. like, mm. you know, coming in. Mm. It, it's beyond just a trek, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm. And I think 99% of people that have been here and done it can relate to what I'm saying. But if three out of every ten of them bit into it, we're already on our way, you know what I mean? Mm. And I honestly think it's achievable for all of I mean, we, we see hundreds yeah. every day. Yeah. If just 1% of them actually started doing something, the ball's already rolling then, surely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that, so that, I do think thing. it's yeah. achievable. we just yeah. got to get people to take yeah. that yeah. first step. It, it, right, it, it, it is about my means. Yeah. And, and I, I, um, I have enough faith that most people actually want this to happen. Um so that the, it, it is achievable, but a lot of people are uncertain about what step they make. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and when people ask me that, I go, well, you know, it's not up to one person to save the world, but we all can look at our own footprint. And now, so I mm. go back to a little bit what I talked about before. But, but more practically on what you, you mentioned, yeah, people walk to and from Annapurna Base Camp. And so what we're trying to encourage people to do is to um, get to the stupa, and then they go into this area here, and they go down that valley, uh, under Machu uh, up the Motikola, towards ABC, and, and that's the standard route. But what we're going to try and get people to do is to go into this valley, um, which is called the Shumonkola, and sits under a mountain called Annapuna Adduction, or Annapuna oh, South, okay. and look at that and go, that's a place of nature, and it and and belongs to nature, let's leave it alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let that place be part of the thirty yeah, percent, yeah, yeah. and and let it flourish the way mm. it should be able to, so that leopards and all other species yeah, can yeah. do their thing. Not just because they're ecologically part of it, but because they have the right to do that as sentient beings. Yeah, yeah. So it's all all those things. Yeah, not absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I think you know. You've got your ideas. You've got you've got your plan of what direction you want to start, sort of, to go in to pre, to gain momentum. You've got the coffee shop thing. I think a little bit more long term than that. You were saying about having a little like meditation retreat yeah. here and things like yeah. that. So that's another thing in the pipeline. Yeah. And what's your estimation for that? One, two years before these things are up and running, or uh, uh, I hopefully sooner, but I mean, I, you know, I, I think definitely within a year. Okay, okay, um, that's good to hear. Like, we, we, you know, we've yeah. got this period coming up now before monsoon, mm. um, which is a lot of it's planning based on what we, we know already. And then, but things, things, um, when the right people are involved, uh, things can happen very quickly. Yeah, in the okay, great. Um, and we do have some good people in Shorong and, and the family I've been working with for many years are amazing. They they drove the building of the stupa and okay, and gone because it only got built a month or so ago. Well, it, 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 it took four years. Okay, but you can imagine because we're so far away from the roads, you know, a lot yeah, went into tricks up and whatever's yeah, a nightmare. Yeah, huge task, yeah, yeah. and and they did an incredible job. Um, so. Uh, and these next steps aren't anywhere near as complicated as that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll be, you know, very simple construction and a lot of it using bamboo mm -hmm. and things. So, so yeah, certainly within 12 months. So anyone who wants to come to the area... That's what I was going to say. We'll have I mean, something to come to. Nepal quickly, in yeah. general, the amount of tourists and fellow travellers that you speak to, a lot of them say, yeah, it, it's always been a bucket list mm -hmm. thing, something they want to do. And I think anyone that's actually been here... you. 
it never leaves you. It mm. just has that yeah. deep, sort yeah, of profound does. thing in you. So for the people watching this that's already been to Nepal, for the people who are planning on coming, mm. if you are going to do the Anna Burma, Burma uh, Base Camp trek, the ABC trek, mm. take a point of stopping in Chongming, yeah. come and see this, yeah. get a little bit more information from uh, Jack, because he's a wealth of information on this area, and then... Once that seed's planted, it never leaves you then. So even if you're not going to go away and change the world, you've already planted that seed, you can just tell a few other people when you get back home. And it just sort of slowly spreads like a mushroom yeah. kind of thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and if people start doing that, you know, that light at the end of the tunnel becomes a little bit bigger. Absolutely. Like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so hopefully. So for those people watching at home that would like to make some kind of contribution, if they go to the wildleopard.net yeah. website, is yeah. there a link on there where they can make a financial donation uh, or whatever? Yeah, or th it? there is. I mean, what, what I tend to do is I I don't think anywhere on the site um, we use the word donation. Oh. We, tend to, we tend to say become involved, yeah. and people buy photographs. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. If, they, if, they, if they don't like the photographs, they can just make a contribution. But... Um, we, we are based, and a lot of this is based on the three leopards that I told you about that experience last year. We're looking at engaging in people in all different ways um, that, that, that they do feel engaged because mm. sometimes even with a donation thing, it can be a little bit sterile and people... I, don't, I do know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've donated yeah. now, so that's my yeah. clear. There's like, that aspect, you know but I mean? also it's they don't like, feel like... Yeah, yeah. That they can make... They can say, okay, I've done my... But also they don't, they don't feel encouraged that they are actually engaged. Mm. And we want to engage everybody yeah, because yeah, it's really yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I'm, I'm happy to... I always try and make the effort to make a personal contact. Sometimes mm. it can take a little bit of time but I, I will always do that because I'm really interested in why people did engage you know whether it's yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh, a, a podcast or whatever what, what was the reason they came across the site or, or heard about things because it's important to understand why they received the message so we can keep keep moving you know mm -hmm. and, and, and improve you know we're yeah, always learning yeah. Always yeah, so yeah, yeah. Always interested in anyone's feedback. And, yeah, all right. Well, that's brilliant. I mean, like, like I say, for everyone that's been here, you've got the attachment, like 99% of people that come in. Mm. The beauty is mm. just indescribable. Yeah, yeah. The people are lovely. The environment's lovely. It, it, yeah. What, what was the word you used um, this morning when we're describing the Koreans that go to the mountain. Yeah. It's not just a trek, it's a, a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. Yeah. Pilgrimage. That was yeah. a word I lost. Yeah. And I mean it's kinda of like a pilgrimage coming in. It is. You're never quite no matter how unreligious or spiritual you are, you never quite leave the same person as when you came in. I think that's mm. I can only well, speak for myself and others that what, 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 what I'd certainly say that. Yeah, what true. what I'd like to say on that is even for some people Annapurna Base Camp isn't actually attainable because it's it's it's, yeah, not, it's a tough track yeah no one can deny yeah, it, yeah. but even shumong as a destination yeah, itself yeah. because of, you know there's other uh reasons for being here and even just to come and just chill yeah, out no, you know, oh, just exact. to get away i mean I mean, you've yeah, got all this. I mean, if you come yeah. and stay a couple of nights yeah. in, just walk up yep. and tuck it in every morning. Yep. You, yep. you know, psychiatrists will be going bankrupt all over the world because if you come and do that, you wake up a clear-headed person. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You know? yeah, yeah, it yeah. really is. It's just yeah. it's hard to describe the yeah. effects it has on your yeah. life. I, 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 I don't want to bankrupt <laughs> anybody, but um, but that, that's a, I think that's a really good way of putting it because it, it is a place... I, I, you know, it's funny you, you mentioned every bit of you're the most stressed out person in the world. You come here and after two days of taking these sights in, you're like, I'm invincible now. Stress is nothing. It's, Look, it's, I, it really is. I, like, I was thinking about this a couple mm. of days ago. I honestly believe everyone that comes here, and even if they care on to do ABC or not, I think they will, they leave here a better person. Yep, I honestly believe. I can't, yep, no, I, and if they can, if they can maybe take in a little more information yeah, yeah, than yeah, has previously yeah. been happening, uh, then uh, that's an even bigger thing. Speaking for myself, thing, yeah. like, and, and quite a few other people I've met while well, I've been doing it, it is a tough track. Mm. Now the big problem is, or the potential problem, uh, I, I feel is. You're so damn knackered coming up all them hundreds mm. of steps after 10 days of trekking. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah I just want to get home. You know, mm. if, if we could find some kind of little looks where they take a, 
a rehab day here, yeah. take a little bit of this in on the way back. And then it sort of planted the seed. Because sometimes if you're so tired and in distress, your legs are aching, your knees are aching, yeah. all you want to do is get home. Yeah, leprosy, okay, okay. You know, but if you actually took a rehab day here, so I think when, when the meditation centre, in fact, combined with like a yoga rehab type mm. thing, so you're loosening off your mm. leg muscles mm. as well as kind of doing that, mm. taking that extra day like we have on the way back, mm. it just allows the overall magnificence of the place to seep in a little bit more, I think, you know. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how we see it. And I, I think mm. Shumong really lends itself to that. Um, it can either be a destination uh, point or it can be something that you just described a place to maybe just um, reflect on where you've yeah. just been uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and also yeah. give the um, yeah, yeah. you live give here you guys you live here yeah this guy does yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. some history oh so you want some history yeah all awesome. right well perfect okay. I, I've almost finished now <laughs> can you give me one minute and okay, then you'll we'll be with okay. one second yeah so You've got a fellow co uh, another customer, okay. another, another <laughs> interesting part, so okay. I, I, won't, uh, I won't interrupt him. Mm. Thanks for taking the time out. I know you're a busy man. You're doing the job of five different people and trying to keep it going with uh, bad Wi-Fi and everything else, and I know how frustrating <laughs> that can be. So I, I wasn't overselling you when I said you're a hero, Jack, honestly. I really... The, the old school people that are rolling the sleeves up and getting their hands dirty and walking the walk, not just doing the, uh, talking the talk, they're a dying species, you know what I mean? Probably even more so than the leopard. So keep flying the flag, <laughs> keep keep positive. People watching this, please don't just click please, on the next link. Please, 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 please do something about it, you know what I mean? All, all the details will be in the... Um, uh, I'll be underneath the video and all that and the links you can click on. Please take it to the next level, spread the word, and hopefully not only this great, beautiful, magnificent place is going to be there, the species within it, and our grandkids can come and enjoy it like we have. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for watching. I know it's a long one, but when you're in a... When you're in the company of uh, magnificence and uh, on both sides, environmental and uh, with a person, you you don't want to cut it short. You want to go for the full thing. Okay, Thank, thanks, thanks guys. Much. We'll Thank see you. you soon. Thank you. Yeah.